All right, 25 lavender fragrances. Are you ready for it? Then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Lavender is a big love for me. I love the way lavender smells naturally uh, growing and of course in fragrances and perfumes. And I've got 25 lavender fragrances here. A lot of different styles, different varieties, and of course, just going in different directions. So if you wanna find out what they are, let's get started. I'm also gonna let you know that these are mostly unisex fragrances and some of them are male targeted. I don't have any specifically female targeted. Most of them are unisex or male targeted, but a lot of these fragrances, since they are lavender, of course, women can wear them as well. So let's get started. We're gonna start right off with uh, this cheapie that I had spoken about in a free, uh, previous video, Ferrari's Pure Lavender. Now this one has lavender, of course, and you also have cashmere wood, and then you have sage. Among other notes, it does smell great when you smell it out of the bottle, it smells like true, Lavender. It's very light, but when, I, when I'm wearing it, it goes very, very metallic and cold on me. So it's not my favorite. And I was complaining in the video about uh, the Ferrari fragrances. I wanted to really love this one. This, this was a love for me, but not only because it was very light, it has that weird metallic touch to it. So I kind of had to rank it low. So this one, we're starting off very, very quickly. And then we're gonna get going into the all the lavender fragrances. I'm gonna go right to Caron Pour en Homme de Caron. And then I also have Caron Pour en Homme de Caron Millicime 2014 edition. If you can find this one, do get it because it's freaking amazing if you like this one. It's a lot more denser, more intense version of this one. And I love it. I love the way this smells and it's, Phenomenal. It's a great, great scent. This is a classic men's fragrance from the early 1900s. Like, I think it dates back to the 30s, but it's very unisex. This is what they thought men should be wearing. And in those times, they thought, you know, lavender was a masculine kind of a smell. So that's how long it's been uh, around. My dad wore it, and I just got obsessed with the smell because he was wearing it all the time. This, as I said, it was from a 2014 launch, and it's phenomenal. If you can get it, get it if you do like this one, because I find it to be this, that this is a great, great version of this one. So this is Pour en Homme de Caron from Caron, and Pour en Homme de Caron uh, Millicime 2014 from Caron. Um, so next we're going to the house of Rania J for Lavande 44. And Lavande 44, again, it's lavender. Then you also have Tonka, Vetiver, Patch, Patchouli, and Labdanum. Uh, I was trying to keep uh, from uh, using too many fougeres. And even though this is more of a lavender fragrance, it does go into the fougere territory, especially when they pair that lavender with, patch uh, not patchouli, but uh, tonka beans. Tonka beans, coumarin, usually ends up in fougere fragrances. So this does go into a fougere direct direction a bit. But it's more about the lavender for me. It's not necessarily a full-on in-your-face fougere like barbershop, but you can kind of pick it up here. And I'm trying to keep it uh, from with a, a, like a minimum of those type of fragrances, but you're going to get close to them. But this is a great house, Rania J, and Lavande 44 is a great, great offering from this house. So that is another one. Next, we're going to the house of Dior with Eau Noir, this one right here. This is the latest version. I think this version came out in 2018 because they all got reformulated. Even though this is now a boutique exclusive in Paris, there are some uh, retailers still selling the old stock. And of course, if you ever make it to Paris or you have someone going there and you want this one, have them pick you up a bottle. Now here with this one, you've got licorice, lavender, coffee, thyme, vanilla. So it's very unique. There is a syrupy quality to it, molasses -y and um, I like it a lot. It kind of almost borders gourmand, but it's lavender that they've kind of like butchered up and made it syrupy and molassesy, kind of sweet and almost gourmand. Originally, this was created by Francis Kirkjian, but now it's been redone by uh, Francois Demachi uh, with that current reformulation from the last couple of years. So this is Eau Noir from Dior. Next, we're going to the house of Raja, and this is Scandal Pour Homme. Here we have another sort of a fougere slash chipre kind of offering from the house of Raja Parfums and this one is all about lemons, lavender, pedigree, and things like that like just very very masculine fougere style, chipre style notes. I think this one actually 
I think it doesn't really go fougere for me. It goes more on the cheaper side. Um, the lemons are pretty prominent, and of course, lavender is definitely prominent, but I think the lemons kind of like tone down the herbaceousness of the lavender in here. So it's a very unique uh, fragrance, but I really, really love it. I have a full on review of this one if you want to check it out. Scandal Pour Om from Raja Parfums is a great, great release. You know what it reminds me of? It does remind me a little bit of YSL's Pour Om from the 70s. So if you have that one, you know what I'm talking about here. So then we're going to the House of Creed, and this is Bois de Portugal. Here we've got a classic masculine fragrance, one that apparently Frank Sinatra wore. Um, it's full on lavender, but it's got a very, very classic smell. It's got cedarwood, sandalwood, bergamot, lots of citruses here. I'm smelling a lot of citruses, but also a lot, a lot of, um, ber I mean, not bergamot, but that's with the citruses. A lot of lavender here. The lavender is not your lavender that you can pick up from the shrub and smell because what they've done is like they like mashed it up and you know blended so well with the the woody notes and the citruses you pick it up but it's not like an authentic lavender but it is there it's really big and herbaceous here so this is uh Bois de portugal from creed and then we're going to the house of uh, chanel and this is uh, chanel's um Jersey, this one right here now if you don't know jersey you might want to check it out if you like lavender but this is a very typical Chanel offering when you smell it you got the Chanel DNA there's that sparkly effervescent vibe like from uh, aldehydes but there's no aldehydes mentioned in the notes but I feel like Chanel's DNA is aldehydes I don't know if that's true I don't know if you get that feeling with their fragrances do put it down put put a comment down and let me know but I feel like as soon as I smell a Chanel fragrance I'm getting the aldehydic backbone which is very obvious here, very, very prominent. So this is uh, Jersey, uh, this is the EDP version. You've got lavender, vanilla, musk, tonka, among other notes. And I really like this one. It's really quite cozy and comforting. You definitely pick up the authentic lavender, but lots of vanilla in here, musk and tonka. So this is Chanel Jersey EDP. With 25 total choices, it's gonna get really packed here, but we're gonna go on to the next scent. And this is from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian, a new, brand new bottle of Masculine Pluriel, the big bottle. This is, I mean, this was a, not a, well, it was a love at first sniff, but I, I was kind of bored of lavenders when this came out. I was like, okay, I'm done with lavender. But you know what? Your nose kind of changes and you come back to notes. And lavender is something that I'm really digging like right now. And you can kind of tell also that the brands, especially like Tom Ford, it's got like four different lavender fragrances out now. Two fougeres or maybe, maybe even three fougeres and then they have lavender extreme. So it's just a trend of people's noses and things like that. And this is a love now. I mean, it, it was a love when I first smelled it. I just thought, you know what? I'm bored of lavender. I'm not going to get it, but now I really love it. And this one's all about lavender, vetiver, patchouli, cedar, lots of woody notes, but it is so good. It's like a very, very classy, uh, masculine lavender fragrance if you're kind of opposed to lavender um, you might want to check this one out it, it d definitely kind of also gets close to being a full-on fougere but it doesn't really get there it, it's a great scent so this is masculine pluriel pluriel from maison francis kirkjian created by francis kirkjian of course and he created this one originally as well next we go into the house of uh, penhaligans and this is lavandula man this one is so good this one's ultra authentic lavender like if you like it ultra authentic if you like like um i have lavender oil that i bring back from perfumeries and grass and sometimes i drip them in the in the shower and then when you're like got the hot water on you can smell the lavender like real lavender oil this one really does smell like that and actually they even have an oil that i've actually was gifted several years ago that I, it was like a bubble bath oil that really smelled amazing and i used to use it with the caron poranome de caron but now i actually have the fragrance and i'm obsessed with this one it's like authentic lavender but what's going on here is you've got lavender you've got clary sage you got musk you got basil you got vanilla so it's kind of sort of I, no i wouldn't say it's going into fougere direct uh, direction it's more about a true authentic lavender and if you like that you might want to check out lavandula so this is from penhaligans and it's lavandula it's an amazing lavender fragrance next we go into the house of uh, frederick mall and it's music for a while now this one was an interesting take on lavender for me. It's an edgy lavender to me. It is actually kind of like a lavender version of their Musio uh, that came out several years ago. I think that's what it 
seems like to me because misio is like this very industrial smelling patchouli very very hard edged and this one actually kind of similar like a industrial smelling lavender like in in your face very beefy like intense like the most masculine lavender you can put your nose on um it's kind of like what they've done is like removed all the like the floral parts of the lavender and just left all the masculine parts so you've got uh lots of lavender of course this is full-on lavender and then you have pineapple and it, do, it does not go into a ventus territory at all it just kind of softens up like and gives it a like, slight edge of fruitiness to that very very bold uh masculine lavender and you got fruity notes and you have some caramel so it's an odd fragrance but when you kind of put your nose on it and you kind of wear it you'll actually end up liking it and i really do like this one as well so this is uh music for a while from frederick mall Two completely different lavenders, of course, here. Next, we're going to the House of Chanel again, and this is Boy. Now, Boy is sort of going into that uh, fougere territory. Again, it's an aromatic. It's definitely, I think it's definitely full-on fougere, but again, it's in Chanel style, and it's a unisex fougere. And once again, that Chanel aldehydic DNA is there. It's like I can smell it as soon as I put my nose on it. It is like, it smells like Chanel. Like you can tell it's a Chanel DNA. I, I don't know, that's, that's my experience with Chanel fragrances, especially, no, I think it's most of them. Um, even though this is unisex, uh, it does kind of lean slight bit, slight, slight bit feminine, but it's a great, great unisex aromatic fougere fragrance. Um, I think this was a solid release from this house and you should definitely check it out. So this is Boy Chanel from Chanel. Next, we go into the house of Fong Dang and this is uh, The Calling right here. Now, the calling is very very unique it's a gourmand lavender and it smells delicious actually it's created by Bertrand du Chaffoul and this one has tobacco at the top along with lavender then you got rum you've got pink pepper and you got chocolate it's so delicious uh, it's also very very expensive so I, I, I use this very very sparingly uh, but this is probably one of the better ones from this house if you don't if you don't know Feng Dang you should definitely check them out especially if you are a fan of Bertrand du Chaffoul if you like gourmands and you like lavender together this one's definitely one for you to try so this is the calling from Feng Dang and then we're going to the house of Ideo or Ideo Perfumer and this is London to Mumbai this one right here now this is a very very unique fragrance the name is very unique as well going from London to Mumbai and I think what's going on is London the in England they like their lavender there's the whole English lavender thing and there's the Yarly Eng lavender thing so maybe it's because you've got the lavender from England and then you go into Mumbai you're getting with like it's got notes of lavender pat uh, patchouli bitter orange and cloves so it gets spicy so it's a very very unique lavender it's to me, it kind of goes into an oriental direction, like an aromatic oriental. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but it, it's a great, great love uh, for of a fragrance. I, I really love wearing this one. And the oranges, the bitter oranges, really, really make the fragrance come alive, along with that kind of uh, astringent, uh, almost medicinal, because lavender does go medicinal uh, lavender. So check it out. This is London to Mumbai from Ideo Perfumer. I'm going to put that there. We've got several more left on this list. We're going to go right to L'Artisan Parfumé and Bucoliques de Provence is the, the next one I'm going to talk to you about. This one is, well, it says, I mean, the word Provence is in the, the name. Of course, you're going to think Provence and Lavender. Lavender and Provence go hand in hand. I've visited Provence many, many times. I've gone to the places where Lavender is grown. Unfortunately, not the time when it's like full-on bloom it's usually in the winter but hopefully I can make it there one year where I can see it all bloom because it's beautiful but this is Bucoliques de Provence it's all about iris lavender and leather and I think leaven leather was also kind of a, an industry in in uh, south of France they had tanneries and things like that so it kind of makes sense uh, that this was kind of a combo of those notes and I really like this one because it's a la it's a, la a lavender, but it's also leather, and it's also iris, and you kind of like this beautiful combination of those three notes together to make for one beautiful fragrance. So check it out. It's Bucoliques de Provence from a house called L'Artisan Parfumé, and you know this house. I've spoken about it on this channel quite frequently. Next up, we're going to a house, another French house called La Parfumerie Moderne, this one right here, and this is a fragrance called Anais, Anais Folles, and I've done a full-on review of this one. It was one of my very first... Um, 
what do you call it? The Saffler Bond fragrance reviews. And this is all about lavender once again. You got tonka, benzoin, nutmeg, and a bunch of other notes. And this is the first time I started noticing that lavender mixed in with these specific kind of notes. And there's another one in here that I'm going to tell you that what it smells like. And I'm going to tell you what that smell is. The lavender along with tonka and maybe like warmer notes sometimes goes into the direction of smelling like, I don't know if you know this um, sweet from the Middle East called halva. It kind of smells like that. I don't know what, what's causing it, but it's the combination of lavender uh, and of course tonka beans and benzoin kind of like going into like a warm and sweet, almost gourmandish direction. And this one kind of does that to me and it gives it a very, very unique vibe. It's very ambery also because you've got that benzoin, it's a vanillic resin, but very, very delicious. These fragrances from this house are all inspired by, uh, ima not imaginary, but um, not necessarily real hotels, or maybe they are real, real hotels, but they're inspired by hotels. So that is La Parfumerie Moderne, Anais Foll. Next, going to the house of Molinard, and this is Lavande. And I'm sure you saw my video comparing this to uh, Tom Ford's uh, Lavender Extreme. Um, they're very, very close to me. They, they smell very, very close. And sometimes, um, uh, it's so close I can't tell them apart, but uh, this one here, Molinar's Lavanda, is a very, very inexpensive lavender. It's 70, uh, $65, and even though this one retails for about $30, 25 to $30 in the discounters, I think if you pay just a, you know, a little more than double, you get a very, very awesome uh, ambery lavender, because what's going on here, you got lots of lavender, you got uh, clary sage, you got vanilla, you also have benzoin, and I believe there's also tonka bean here, so it gives it a very, very warm experience. Um, and it is very, very close to Lavender Extreme, which is coming up right next after this one. I find that the uh, Lavender Extreme from Tom Ford goes a little more cooler than this one. This one actually wears a lot warmer, and I really, really enjoy it. It is also a very uh, excellent performing fragrance. If you like it long-lasting and expensive, and you're on a budget, you should check out Molinard Lavande. Uh, from the house of Molinard. And next up is Lavender Extreme. Uh, as you can see, I haven't even taken off this thing because I just wanna keep this um, bottle. But uh, this is, again, very similar to uh, Lavande from Molinard. They have their nuances. I find this one to be cooler experience. It starts off very warm. It smells very warm out of the bottle and as soon as you spray it. But once it dries, it goes cooler and cooler. Like it goes greener and lighter. And it's a cooler wearing experience compared to this one, which is a lot warmer to me. But price-wise, there's so much, so much more different. I mean, so much more from one another. But again, if you're on a budget, go with this one. If you have the money and you like this bottle, go with this one. If you want to find out more about the comparison of the two, you should definitely watch the video I, I aired a couple days ago. But with this one, you've got lots of lavender. Again, I think in this one, there's three different kinds of lavender according to Sephora where I got the information. And then there's also tonka beans, there's benzoin, there's clary sage, and a couple of other notes in the notes. And it's a very, very, it's a great lavender. I mean, I love this one, don't get me wrong, but uh, they're very similar. So that's Lavender Extreme from Tom Ford. Next, this is a classic. I finally repurchased it. Men's classic. This is um, Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Mal. Um, this is all about lavender if you didn't know this, but I'm going to spray some because I'm not wearing anything. Um, now this one has been butchered quite a bit. Like it's been reformulated quite a bit. It doesn't smell like what I remember it. I mean, it doesn't smell like what I remember it back then. It's very, very light now, but it is all about lavender with vanilla. You got also mint in there, some cinnamon tonka, and lots of other notes. It's a great classic to have. And I recently purchased the Supreme Edition of this, the limited edition of it, and I, I won't be opening that bottle up. But um, that's why I wanted to pick up another one because I wanted to just experience this fragrance again. But again, uh, if you're new to lavender fragrances and you're a man and you want to explore lavender, this is one to start with, I think. You can find them at the discounters and uh, it's a, still a great lavender, just doesn't smell as strong as when I remember it. So that's La Mail from Jean-Paul Gaultier. And then the next one, we're going to the house of Mancera and this is Black Gold. And this one is a very, very unique lavender. It's lavender with violet and you've got cinnamon, you've got nutmeg, so spices. Um, the lavender is prominent and it's also prominent with the violet and it's also very, very sexy, it's spicy, it's unique. Black gold, the name totally, totally makes sense for me. The way it smells, it smells very, very expensive. Um, so if you like that kind of thing, um, the lavender in here also is not like very prominent like this one as I was telling you guys earlier. This one's like a 
I think this one, this is how it should be. This one here is so authentic lavender. I mean, even this one here, but the ambery touches make for a unique twist. But here, this is probably the most authentic lavender here, if you're, if you're gonna go for the most authentic lavender. But this one doesn't smell like, like real lavender. Like it does, there's lavender in there, but it's not the authentic kind because they have all the other notes mixed in. So that's black gold from Mansara. Well, we're getting close to uh, the end here. We've got about six more fragrances, six, yeah. And if you have any of these and uh, you like them, please put a comment down. And if you have been wanting any of them, please let me know as well. But next up is a fragrance from the house of Gucci and it's from their uh, Alchemist uh, uh, collection and Al Alchemist Garden. And this is Moonlight Serenade, this one right here. Then this one actually, I think, it goes into an authentic direction like this one, but not quite, doesn't stay there. It's very, very aromatic and fresh. And this is more fresher than this one here. These bottles are also pretty unique. I love the bottles. And this one has notes of lavender, sage, tonka bean. And these are the waters from this collection. So they're lighter, easier experiences. If you like uh, fragrances that are not intense, this is something you might want to try. So this is Moonlight Serenade from Gucci. Next we go into the house of Frank LA or Frank Los Angeles and this is uh, Frank number two. And this is a very unique, almost going to the aromatic fougere territory. It's definitely an aromatic because you've got lots of herbs in here. Uh, of course the lavender, but you also have plum to give it a fruity touch. There's lots of bergamot in here. It gives it a bright and citrusy experience. And then there's that cognac note, so it goes a little boozy. A great, great release. This house is a great house. It's a hundred dollars, no. $130 for 100 ml bottles and there's three different fragrances in the collection and I really like this one number two So check that one out from Frank Los Angeles Frank number two next It's the house of Le Galeon this one right here And this is Cologne Nocturne and Cologne Nocturne is not Cologne because they have one called Cologne Which is all like Eau de Cologne amped up this one's Cologne Nocturne Nocturne I think it means nighttime. This is for nighttime and this is like amped up with uh, lavender so uh, the very first it's almost like the eau de cologne like the very fresh uh, citrusy colognes with lots of lavender added to it so it gives it a boost and a uh, intensity to the like the fresh 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 colognes so you got lavender you've got rosewood you got bergamot you got spices in this one it's quite awesome I think if you're looking for something similar to an eau de cologne but you want that oomph uh, this one's definitely one for you to try so this is cologne nocturne from Le Galeon Next, we're going to the house of Montal. We had to have one Montal in here, and this is a very unique Montal. This is Oud Lavender, or Aoud Lavender. According to Raja, a lot of Middle Easterners do say Aoud. So this is a very unique thing, because I never thought you can connect lavender with Oud, and it is possible. Um, just like Honey Oud, one of their fragrances. Um, but this one's Oud Lavender. And the name Oud comes first. So you gotta know that this one's more about Oud than Lavender. At least that's my experience. But you got notes of Lavender, Oud, powdery notes, saffron, and things like that. It's a very, very oriental fragrance. But I think they kind of tone down the Lavender because it does dry down to more of an Oud and saffron rather than the Lavender. Which kind of makes sense because it is a kind of an odd thing to think about combining lavender and oud. But it does work here, it's a great scent. Check it out, oud lavender from Montal. Two more left. Uh, second to the last one, we're going with Sunshine Man from Amouage. So this is the other fragrance I was saying, kind of reminds me a little bit of Halva. I don't know if you guys have eaten Halva, but I had this weird experience with lavender when it started with this one. Um, I noticed that it kind of reminds me of Halva, like the, the, the sweet, because it gets their sweetness in here. Same with this one, I think it's a tonka bean, but this one has brandy and uh, vanilla, but it's lavender, tonka, brandy, vanilla, immortel. Um, there's a very, very dry experience, much drier than this one, but it has an interesting, like, uh, a Middle Eastern halva smell to it. Very, very interesting. I, I like it. I love gourmands, and that's the experience I get with this one. Very, very unique experience. And this is actually, uh, this is like, uh, number two lavender for Amouage. They have Bracken Man and uh, they're completely different. Both of them are aromatics. The other one's a fougere. This one doesn't say that it's a fougere. I, I think it kind of goes in that direction but doesn't stop there. It's definitely not a fougere to me but it's definitely aromatic with the lavender. So this is Amouage uh, Sunshine Man. I'm going to put that one here. 
Last but not least, we're going to end this list with Guerlain's uh, Heritage at number 25. Again, this is not a, a, an order. I'm not, I'm not ranking him. I'm just giving you uh, ideas for lavender fragrances. And this is uh, ending with a masculine release, but I think woman can totally pull this one off. This is an awesome friend, uh, fragrance. It's one of my number one favorite design fragrances as of late. I've loved it for years, but it's becoming like number one because it still smells good after all, all its reformulations. To me, the thing, I think this is a fragrance that was the masculine answer to Guerlain's Samsara. I don't know, that's just my opinion. I don't know how true that is. But this is Heritage EDT. You got patchouli, sandalwood, and lavender. Lavender is not as prominent as the patchouli and sandalwood, but it's certainly there. But man, this is so good. It's amazing. This is one of the best men's fragrances ever created. Came out originally in 1990, and I'm obsessed with it right now um, because it smells so good. Um, check it out. If you like it lavender, and but you also like it more with the masculine notes of sandalwood and patchouli than Heritage is definitely one for you to try. So there you have it. Those are the fragrances. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lavender list. I hope you like lavender fragrances. If you don't like lavender, please do let me know. If you like these fragrances, do let me know. If you have any questions or comments about these fragrances, also let me know. And if I'm missing any lavender fragrances that you highly recommend, please do let me know because I don't have everything, obviously. I can't have everything. This is 25, and I was able to compile 25 fragrances. I was limiting the fougeres, as I said, but there are some that are kind of nearing close to the fougere style, and some are actually fougeres, but definitely was wanting to keep it more authentic, more about lavender rather than fougere. And if you want the most authentic lavender, it's Lavandula from uh, Penhaligans. This smells just like an authentic lavender fragrance. Everything else mentioned here are very, very different, unique takes on lavender. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.